Let's talk about the pros and the cons of short-term rentals. Amber and I opened our first short-term rental over two years ago. We bought a house across the street from us with the intention of turning it into another rental, long-term rental house to add to our portfolio. And we decided to try something. We said, let's try a short-term rental, or as we also call it, an Airbnb, and let's see how it works. And we learned a lot of things about the pros and the cons. We now have 13 of them in growing, so I think you're gonna see there's a lot more pros than there are cons, but let's dive into them. So pros, number one, that house would have rented for $1,500 a month. It now rents for closer to $4,000 a month. The house stays occupied almost all the time. So in other words, I don't have to have any vacancies. Like as a traditional landlord, you've got sometimes a month or two months when you're looking for a new long-term tenant, the house stays vacant. Therefore, it's income-less during that time. That never happens in a short-term rental because you always have short stays. You may make more one month than another month, but overall, it always stays occupied. A long-term tenant can destroy your house over time through just regular wear and tear. If they're in a house 24 seven, they live in a house, they have kids in the house, they have parties in the house, they, they do regular living in a house. There is wear and tear on a house. Guests that come into your house as a short-term rental don't do nearly the amount of damage that a long-term guest does because they don't live in the house long-term because it's not occupied 365, 24-7. So those are some real advantages to having a short-term rental. Now let's talk about some cons to a short-term rental. The cons to it is, yes, you make a lot more income, but one of the cons is you have to work more for that income. What do I mean by that? In a long-term rental, you put a tenant in and pretty much it's done. You turn it over to a property management company, it's done. If you decide to be one of those people that manage it yourselves, which we don't teach, but if you decide to manage your long-term rental by yourself, you're gonna have some problems, but sometimes you can go months without hearing from a tenant. You'll have to collect rent, but other than that, you can sometimes go months or even years without hearing from a tenant. Well, you're gonna make, you know, let's say $1,500 a month for that property. Now, on a short-term rental, there are people coming and going and coming and going. So you have to answer questions about booking. You have to answer questions online about your house and what amenities it has and what's it near and you know what's it like and all these different questions. You have to almost be a customer service rep to get people to come in. Now, you do it all through an app like Airbnb or VRBO or other apps that you use, but you can use an app for these things, which makes life a lot easier, but nonetheless, it does require work. So yes, you make a little more money. Well, not a little more, you make a lot more money, but it does require a little more work. One of the is if you own a house long term, you're going to normally, if it's a rental long term, you're going to have the tenant put the power and utilities in their name and they're going to pay for that. They're going to pay to keep the lawn mowed, to keep the driveway plowed if you live in the Northeast. And those are all things that they're going to pay for and take care of so you don't have to worry about it. However, in a short term rental, that becomes your responsibility. So you're going to have to pay for the power on the house, right? And you have to pay for internet service because that's how all the TVs run in the house. And you're going to have to keep the house cleaned up or right? keep the maintenance on the house, keep the, the lawn mowed, um, keep the driveway plowed and all that kind of stuff. Now, those things do cost money. And that's something you have to keep an eye on with the house. But that is one of the cons of, uh, of owning that is you have to. Now, at the end of the day, a short term rental that brings in with our example around $4,000 a month you'll still net about $1,500 a month profit after paying your mortgage, after paying your taxes, after paying your insurance, and all the things that you, you have to pay for, the utilities, the internet service, you'll still net around $1,500 to $2,000 a month in profit on a short-term rental. So it's still a better deal all in all, right? Still a better deal. One of the cons is parties, right? You can have parties at a house. That's something that we have been able to really master. We have a system now that really helps us to minimize parties. So that's one thing you don't want to have happen. We had it happen across the street from us. That's a story for a different video. But oh my gosh, that was an interesting experience with about 75 kids in the house across the street and a nice quiet cul-de-sac at two in the morning. Ah. Anyway, that's a different story, but that can happen in a short-term rental. Now we do have ways to filter that out. Next is neighbors. Neighbors don't always like having an Airbnb next door, and I understand why, but we try to manage ours in such a way that it's not a bother to neighbors. So it's really important that you keep the neighbors happy. And also, it's not allowed. That's one of the cons. It's not allowed in every municipality. Where we live in Florida, we couldn't Airbnb this house if we wanted to, because in this town, it's not allowed. Now, one town over, it's allowed. One town over here, it's allowed in some houses, not other houses. It all depends on the zoning, but you have to look at that. So there are some limitations on where you can do short-term rentals. But again, the income outweighs the, or the, the pros outweigh the cons in a big way. So if you're considering short-term rentals, if you want to have a way to generate sometimes four, five, six, ten times what you're making now on your regular rental, 
Well, short-term rentals is the way to go. There's a little more work to it. There's a little more of a system, but I'm telling you, it is an awesome way to generate two things, cash flow and wealth. Traditional rentals generate some minor cash flow and they build wealth long-term. Where Airbnb or short-term rentals can generate significant cash flow as well as build your wealth four, five, six, ten times faster than regular rentals. Take a look for them for yourself. They are an awesome investment.